Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about Red Bull Hardline. It is in one week this weekend, and there's been a lot of chatter going around about this race, mostly because of this feature. Um, they are changing the top section of the course that's gonna lead into this canyon gap, and then right, this is right before the um, the big jumps. It's like, they have like the lily pad feature, and then like the 90, then the 95. It's gonna cut off that top section and replace it with this. And there's been a lot of speculation about has this gone too far, especially after Bernard Kerr, Matt Jones, and Jimbo went and tested it. Um, Bernard Kerr sent it deep and left. Um, Matt Jones sent it deep and right. And Jimbo got bucked so hard, uh, he crashed viciously. Luckily, he still made it over. I don't know if I'm going to show the video just because I don't have access to it. But it is, it's around Instagram. It's around um, YouTube, it's pretty easy to find. So if you, it's an insane crash, but um, it's made a lot of people wonder if it's too, if Red Bull Hardline's gone too far, if this track is just too much. This is what we know about the feature itself. It's made out of scaffolding. It honestly kind of looks ridiculous. It doesn't really match the landscape of Hardline. It kind of looks like an evil Knievel jump rather than true, like a standard downhill course. It looks like something at a district, at a Red Bull district ride or out of a slope style course. Yeah, people really don't know how to react to this. Why did, why did they feel the need to make this giant course? Do they feel like they have to one up Tasmania? I don't really feel like they have, they, I don't know if they felt like they had to one up Tasmania, maybe a little bit. I think it's more just, Wales is known as the most iconic, it's the gnarliest downhill track in the world. I mean, we've been saying that for 10 years, right? And so they, they have to live up to that. They have to make it, I think they feel more of a pressure to make it gnarlier every single year. I don't know why they can't just be happy with, it's, I mean, it's plenty gnarly right now. Um, and as cool as it is, I think some of us just want to watch a downhill race. It, it looks like a ski jump. It looks like a roller coaster. Like it, it looks wrong. It, it, I don't know, man. There's apparently a couple different crossings um, that's going to be going over this river as it comes down. It's more of a, the track overall is more of an elevation drop than it was before. Yeah, anyway, it's a lot of people are, are nervous about it. The, uh, the track, as always, is made by Dan Atherton, and he um, has been quoted about this year's um, he said, Tassie was so fun and gnarly and the writers loved it. And it's hard to strike that balance is hard. I think he's referring to the balance of pushing the sport and still being safe, which inherently those two things are always going to be kind of in contradiction to each other. Um, he also said, this year is the most nervous I've ever been. I'm genuinely scared for the writers because the consequences are so high. I'm... I, I, I think they will fix the lip. I think the lip is the number one problem. I, I think it's the reason why Jimbo crashed. You have those two big, com, you have that compression coming down the ramp and then the compression on the lip. Um, both Bernard Kerr and Matt Jones in their videos that they posted after testing the jump said, made it sound like they were gonna try to fix the lip. And I think they will, they will for sure do that. Um, they, I mean, they have to, right? <laughs> How are they going to convince people to hit this thing any, if they don't? Um, sounds like they will also be putting a safety net underneath. Um, I think with this jump hurts more, ob obviously there's the safety concern and enough people are talking about that. So I, if I'm not going, touching on the safety concern enough for you, I want you to understand that I, this jump is terrifying and it is dangerous. I don't want people to think it's not. I think they can fix it and make it safer at least. I don't know about safe, but safer for sure. And at least safe enough that they will hold a race this weekend. I might buy, if, I mean, if 20 people go to the hospital this weekend, I guess I will be wrong on that. But I think the bigger problem that this feature does is twofold. I, I made a video early year this year that did really well. And I talked about how I think with this new hardline series, Red Bull is trying to kind of retake downhill. Okay, UCI, if you don't want to work with us, we're going to start our own thing. It's going to be um, better tracks, uh, gnarlier tracks, and we're going to try to kind of retake the prestige. We have the voice talent with Rob Warner. We already have all the broadcasting things we need and the infrastructure to do that. Um, and now we just need more and more tracks. And slowly, riders will just want to race our thing as independent riders uh, rather than as teams for UCI. And I think that they, with Tasmania, they did an absolute success for that. Um, the problem is, is when you, where you don't have, you, you haven't made it yet. 
if that makes sense. You're still very dependent on the money that flows through World Cups right now for there to be professional riders to race hardline, to have that thing. And you're trying to, all the best talents at UCI right now. So you're the, the talent you're pulling from is at UCI and those riders have contracts. Uh, Dean Lucas in a video talking about this, which I will link in the description because it is an absolutely fantastic video where he talks about this. Riders are not going to come to hardline if it's this dangerous because their team isn't going to allow it. They're going to say, no, you can't race hardline. We need you for World Cup seasons. If you go break yourself on a scaffolding evil, evil Knievel jump, then you're done for the year. No, we, we need you. We are paying you to race World Cups. Uh, you can't go to hardline. Um, that's the rumor has it. That's why Logue Bruni didn't go to Tasmania. And Tasmania is nowhere near as crazy as this jump. Um, I think... In that respect, if Red Bull cares about their league or their series that they're trying to grow, there has to be a limit on not the spectacle, but there has to be a limit on the danger level. Otherwise, people will not even show up for the race. Um, I will be monitoring throughout the week to see how if at all any racers drop out, I would not be surprised if they do, but will be interesting to see if drop r- racers drop out and um, how many riders are actually there for the finals. They made a big deal about women racing at Hardline. I don't know if you saw those compressions, but one of the big reasons why men downhill racers are faster than women down racers is because they can take compressions better. They're just a little bit stronger. Is it safe? I don't know. I'm not going to tell any any of the ladies not to try if they really want to, but I'd be nervous. There's there's a lot going into this, and I think that this may have gone in the it, – it's almost – and I don't want to come off as this is a bad uh, – yeah, it is. It's a bad PR move and because of how dangerous it is. It's, a bad, it's dangerous for the riders, and because it's so dangerous for the riders, it might be a bad PR move, I think is what I'm trying to get at. So – let me know your comments down below. Um, I want to really interested to see what you guys think. Um, and then I will give my final thoughts after the race. Um, just hopefully nobody gets hurt. Okay, everybody. Peace.